Greetings, students of the Force, and welcome to the Archives. Ever since the stranger revealed himself, a lot of things haven't quite been adding up. Odd choices and decisions were made without much answer given, such as Chimere dancing around owning the title of Sith, seemingly needlessly revealing himself to the Jedi, and putting up with an obviously weak apprentice. However, we present to you a theory today that could potentially answer all questions. What if Chimere is the canon depiction of one Darth Venomous, a rather obscure Sith Lord? Venomous appears to us in the Darth Plagueis novelization. Sometime after the death of Plagueis' own master, a new Sith Lord shows up to challenge Plagueis for the legacy of the Rule of Two, a Sith that Plagueis had no prior knowledge of. This happened to be a second apprentice trained in secret by Darth Tenebris, and in today's Holocron, we will be recounting the story of Darth Venomous and analyzing the parallels that he shares with Chimere, as there is a potential that we are being misled by the Sith. So now, let us begin and crack open today's Holocron. It's not exactly known where Venomous actually came from in Legends, as we can never fully rely on the words of a Sith Lord. But upon first meeting him, Plagueis surmised that he must have been an offspring of Tenebris, perhaps a secret son, due to both of them being of the Bith species. Since apparently Biths reproduce using a computerized mating program, it was Plagueis' assumption that Venomous was more like a clone of the Bith scientist than anything else. However, Venomous quickly corrected Plagueis and called him a fool outright, stating that he had been found and trained by Tenebris and was not a product of this computerized mating program. Apparently, Tenebris believed that he needed a backup plan should Plagueis ever fail. Tenebris always thought Plagueis was weak. There is also a possibility placed within the book that Tenebris viewed Plagueis as too disloyal and required an apprentice that had total fealty to Darth Tenebris, the one true Dark Lord, believing that Plagueis had no greater loyalty to him at all. But either way, he had shown up to the moon's private retreat on the moon of Sojourn in order to challenge Darth Plagueis for the legacy of the Sith and the title of Darth. Venomous had already claimed the Darth title, but it was illegitimate since he had been self-appointed and had not killed the master. Plagueis mockingly points this out, but Venomous insists that he'll take the title from Plagueis upon his death. It was now clear that their mutual master had left orders for Venomous to prove himself by killing Plagueis in open combat. But what this Bith apprentice did not know was that Tenebris was already dead. Plagueis took great pleasure in revealing this truth to the false Sith shocking Venomous, and at this point, the Dark Lord of the Sith invited the new pretender to go through with his challenge. He had come so far after all. At this, Venomous charges, and the only true duel that we're aware of in Darth Plagueis' career begins. Ever the pragmatist, Plagueis states to himself that he finds duels to be a tedious affair filled with needless emotion and acrobatics. Yet his master had always enjoyed a good sparring session, and believed that Plagueis had grown to be a master of lightsaber combat, despite not liking it whatsoever. He seems to have instilled that love of battle in Venomous before Plagueis here. Venomous, who was trained exceptionally well in lightsaber dueling, so well in fact that it is implied that he mastered several forms of lightsaber combat. Venomous switched between them constantly while dueling, and to Plagueis' surprise, the Bith had also been trained in his own specific style. It was clear that Tenebris wanted to give his new apprentice the best shot possible at killing the old one. Despite being an illegitimate Sith Lord, Venomous was shockingly powerful as a warrior, who was experienced in advanced force techniques as well. At one point, Venomous jumped onto a side of a tree branch, while Plagueis blew away with a rough force blast. But Venomous actually managed to stay within the air, fighting while in a state of temporary levitation, which gave him an artificial high ground. Plagueis conceded that this was no small feat, and was actually impressed by it, which of course we know. We know Dooku, Vader, and Chimere also utilized this force glide technique, which is already extremely rare. But of course, that's mainly using the force to slow one's fall from a greater height, or in Lord Vader's case, as he did on Cloud City, descend across a longer distance. But Venomous actually managed to hold himself in the air for a few moments, taking an insane amount of focus and skill while dueling with the lightsaber. Shockingly, Venomous even manages to slip through Plagueis' defenses and scorch the side of his neck. All in all, just like Chimere proved to be, Venomous was no pushover as a warrior. But soon, the tide would turn as Plagueis devised a plan. 
Venomous was formidable to be sure, but he was emotional and definitely still reeling from the news of Tenebris's death. Plagueis, noting this, falls into a trance, stops attacking altogether, instead focusing on passively defending and responding to the Bith's advances. Venomous grows irritated, and so he makes his strikes heavier, harder, and more aggressive. Venomous allowed his precision to slip, and in that fatal moment, Plagueis made his strike, slashing across Venomous's chest before disarming him. Plagueis's blade stroke was so precise that he managed not only to hit the Bith with a shallow cut, not deep enough to hit his organs or lungs, since Plagueis wanted to keep Venomous alive. The blow could not have been more perfect if Plagueis had had a thousand attempts. Realizing this, Venomous quickly conceded to Plagueis's victory and declared him the master of the Sith, even pledging his fealty as a new apprentice. Plagueis, of course, was not about to take him up on that offer though, and instead did something strange, sauntering over to a nearby flower that was growing from a tree, commanding Venomous to consume it. The Bith stated that he recognized the flower and knew it would poison him, but Plagueis promised that he would keep him alive, and he did as a subject of his many experiments. Venomous would eventually reach his end when Plagueis discovered the secret to manipulating the midichlorians to keep someone alive. Plagueis had kept Venomous in a vegetative state for years. With his newfound power though, he would now kill Venomous. The cycle was complete, but this would not be the end. Plagueis would call upon the midichlorians to revive Venomous, bringing him back from the dead. And he would do this over and over again over the course of years, until Venomous's organs would eventually give out and the Sith would die permanently. A rather horrific end for a Sith aspirant. But what does any of this have to do with Chimere? It's our theory that Venomous is actually Chimere. He may not be a Bith, but he's the canon fill-in for what Venomous represented. Essentially a red herring meant to throw both of us and the Jedi off of the true scent of the Sith. Picture this, Chimir was trained by the real Sith Master, likely Tenebris during this time, but he had no real future as one since Tenebris already had trained Plagueis. Soon, Chimir realized this, he was only being used, and so has struck off on his own to carry out his own plan and to get an apprentice for himself, an acolyte. He no longer cared for the rule of two and its secrecy since the Sith had already betrayed him. This explains why he didn't immediately and proudly proclaim his name as a Sith, but instead says, you might call me a Sith. This would explain why he boldly announced his presence to the Jedi and attacked them semi-publicly. It was a show of strength and a disregard for the secrecy of the rule of two. Since Chimere had nothing to lose now, he wears a mask to protect his identity in the galaxy, but had no problem revealing his Sith alter ego as the stranger. It also explains why he has yet to mention his Darth moniker, because he either doesn't have one or it's an illegitimate Darth. The similarities to Venomous that Chimere has is that he is trained well, but clearly has little future as an authentic Sith Lord, at least as far as we know. They're both very familiar with poisons and like to use unconventional methods when dueling. But the key difference is that while Venomous was incredibly loyal to his false Sith master and potential father, believing himself to be a successor, Chimere knows he was nothing but a distraction. He's inexperienced as a Sith master and still trying to find out how to properly select an apprentice. Unfortunately, Force sensitives that haven't already been found by the Jedi are extremely rare, and so he has very little to work with. When the twins showed up though, one of them was already blinded by vengeance, so she was easy to manipulate until she became a weak liability, but in the wake of her failure came a possible success, her equally naive sister. It is very possible that right now in the Acolyte, Darth Tenebris and Darth Plagueis are still out there somewhere, and Chimere is trying to muster strength to challenge them for the true Sith lineage the right of two. Right now, Chimir is more like a Sith apostate, probably hiding from them as well, who both want to kill Chimir even as much as the Jedi do. He's a threat to the Sith's plans, throwing away the secrecy that they have fought for centuries to justify. But while this theory patches up a lot of holes in the narrative, the question is whether Canon is willing to utilize the Darth Venomous figure. But what do you think? Does this theory make sense to you? And if it were revealed that Chimere wasn't an actual Sith in the Bainite lineage, would you prefer this outcome or would you feel like the entire thing was a waste of time? As always, my friends, acolytes, and students of the Force, thank you so much for visiting us for today's Holocron opening and reading, and may the Force be with you.